On the 17th of March, one of the most brutal video game hacks in history happened, where during a pro game, a hacker hacked into two of the pro's computers and forced them to use cheats in front of tens of thousands of people. But many of you aren't aware of the warning signs that were presented months before this hack happened, and also the devastating effect it had on Apex, which still lasts to this day. So let's look at the six months of chaos that led up to this hack and how it could have been stopped. And this whole story starts over on Rust, where there was a cheat developer called Tomoxa who made and sold sold cheats for the game. By Tomox's own account, he was just a normal player on Rust until one day he got false banned, which would in turn give him a hardware ban making him unable to play Rust, which apparently influenced Tomoxa to become a cheat developer for many games actually. And one of those games was Apex Legends. We don't really know an exact date, but at some point Tomoxa started developing Apex Legends cheats as well and started using these cheats in Apex under the name Destroyer 2009. The first sighting of Tomoxa, aka Destroyer Destroyer 2009 in Apex was on December the 11th, 2023, where he was playing as Pathfinder and using some insane aimbot in just a normal lobby. There was one strange thing making Destroyer different from all of the other aim hackers, though. He was using these hacks in console, which is, well, very, very rare. And this is where the Destroyer Reign of Chaos would truly begin, and he would almost become a known name in the Apex community because of his hacks in PlayStation lobbies, which were very hard to counter and very rare to see. Day after day after day, there will be clips of Destroy 2009 doing some insane stuff in a PlayStation lobby, which absolutely infuriated people just wanting to play the game. You may have also recognized that in these clips, Destroyer has a lot of rare badges, like ones exclusive to Season 1, and this is because Destroyer is either getting hacked accounts or buying accounts to hack on, so whenever one gets banned, he can just move on to another. Destroyer would continue to bully high-level lobbies, even getting into games with Imperial Howl, where Destroyer can be seen with the name PS6 Plus user. Regarding that PS6 stuff, you might want to remember that for later. And in this lobby, Destroyer also had a prep badge. Luckily, later on during this day, Howe and his team were able to take down Destroyer, but it wasn't easy. He's a very good hacker. There are quite a few clips of Destroyer getting caught out, which is really funny because this guy deserves everything he gets. I mean, how can you be hacking and die like this? That's absolutely insane. Also, you may notice he's using the same Rampart skin in a lot of these clips, so it must have took Respawn a long time to ban his accounts. This is where it gets good though. One week after Destroyer is killed like this, he gets into a game with Mande, and Mande actually manages to interview Destroyer, which gives us a lot of his motives, and they're about as stupid and ridiculous as you think. In this interview, we find out that Destroyer is 18, and he says he's from Belarus, but this might be a lie. In this, Destroyer also reveals that he develops cheats for Apex, and cheats for around 3 hours a day, and then plays legit for 3 hours a day in Apex. Interestingly enough, Destroyer does think he's better than the average pro because he creates the cheats, and then has a 40 KD of the cheats, which is definitely an interesting train of thought, and at the same time he reveals that he gets banned a lot, but just buys new accounts for $3 anyway. Later in the interview with Mandy, Destroyer does reveal what you would call his villain origin story, where he did get false banned from Rust, and started developing cheats because of this. And that's about it for the interview. Destroyer seemed very arrogant and clearly didn't care what he was doing, and he said he just did it for fun. Luckily, this wasn't the only interview with Mandy he would have, and it seems because of this interview, Destroyer did something pretty weird to Mandy. After this interview, the Destroyer hacking rampage kind of gets crazy and he becomes extremely well known. He's seen in pretty much every hacker clip somehow, I don't know how, and also near enough becomes a meme, although not nearly as much of a meme he would become in the future. But on the 27th of January, Destroyer crosses the line of just being a normal annoying aimbotter to a full on hacker, and this is where he truly begins becoming an annoyance and a worry for respawn. As on this day, Destroyer gifts Mande 4,000 Apex packs seemingly out of nowhere, which is extremely worrying because this should be impossible without spending $4,000. It seems during this time frame, he also gifted Imperial Hal a load of packs and potentially some other streamers. This pack hack is very worrying for several reasons. First of all, he shouldn't be able to gift to random people. Second, where did he get the money? And third, how is he doing this? This hack has never been seen before in Apex and people weren't too worried for some reason, even though it seemed like this guy had access to some sort of developer tool. But after this, all will proceed pretty normally. Mandate would refuse to open these packs and still has them to this day. And the clips of Destroyer would somewhat slow down. It's really hard to find clips of him hacking for the next two weeks and well we come to see why because nearly two weeks after the pack incident well this happens bot armies containing hundreds of bots are summoned on random streamers like imperial howl his watson and Mande, and the person controlling them all well that would happen to be destroyer 2009 he was back and doing hacks that we've literally never seen before in gaming and clearly this guy had more access than the normal hacker or modder 
he clearly had access to something in the back end of Apex's systems. If Respawn weren't worried before, well, they definitely should be now. Although, during this era of bot rampages, in a very convenient moment, Destroyer's main account gets into the same squad as Mande, and Mande conducts a second interview with Destroyer, now with the knowledge that he's capable of this, instead of the knowledge that he's just a random annoying hacker. And this is where a lot more is revealed. First of all, it's revealed that Destroyer sent these packs to Mande, which is just insane. He also claims when he sent these packs, he logged onto the people's accounts who he sent these packs to and opened packs on their accounts. One of these people being Imperial How. If he wasn't lying, that is very dangerous. Honestly, I think we're very lucky Mande actually managed to interview Destroyer twice because we know so much about him thanks to these interviews. And also, partly because of these interviews, we were able to connect Destroyer to an Unknown Cheats account. And if you don't know what Unknown Cheats is, it's an internet forum where people can talk about cheats and hacking in video games. So because of this, we can also see what Destroyer was saying on there as well. And a day after his interview with Mande, he made a comment under a post of himself saying, damn, that guy must be abusing the PlayStation 6 kernel emulation exploit. Damn, where have I seen the PS6 meme before? Also, do bear in mind, at the time when he posted this, people didn't know this was actually Destroyer 2009's account, so we kind of thought he was posting this anonymously. Unfortunately, as you'll come to find, this unknown cheats account was kind of his downfall. After this, once again, we saw a weird worrying drop-off of activity from Destroyer 2009. The only major activity from him for like the next month almost was when he was hacking in a lobby and a load of pros teamed up to kill him. This is one of the best moments in Apex, honestly. Loads of people teamed up in a pred lobby to kill an annoying cheaty. I love to see it. But apart from that, it's really hard to find clips of Destroyer 2009 hacking in this time. And well, unfortunately, if we went off past patterns when he disappeared, this didn't mean anything good. And well, it really didn't. Because the next time we saw Destroyer was nearly a month later on March the 17th. In what situation did we see him? Well, Apex Legends has its own sort of pro league called the Apex Legends Global Series, where pros from all over the world fight to go to lands and then win a cash prize, and maybe if they're good enough, a trophy. And on March the 17th, the day the incident happened, it was the ALGS Regional Finals for North America, meaning during this game, pros were fighting to go and play in person in Los Angeles. So it was very important to the players and they had to put everything into it. So, Destroyer2009 saw an opportunity. An opportunity to show one of his biggest exploits off to an absolutely enormous crowd in a huge event. There was literally no better time for this. So, the games proceeded. The first few games actually went quite well. They were just normal Apex games. They were a bit intense because it was the regional finals, but after a few games, it started getting a bit weird. As a few people watching the POV of Jen Burton, one of the players in the ALGS, started noticing his arrows weren't going where he was shooting. They were just flying off wherever they wanted to. And the weirdest part was they were getting kills as well. This is the POV of the person struck by the magical arrow. Something fishy was going on. And then only a few seconds later, all was revealed. Suddenly, a cheat menu pops up on Jen Burton's screen and every single enemy becomes visible through the walls. At the same time, the chat is spammed, proclaiming that this hack is done by Destroyer2009 and random. At uh, a split second's notice, it may seem like Jen Burton accidentally revealed his hacks, but it was much worse. Somehow, he was compromised and had hacks put onto his computer, which is just next level insanity. When this happens, nobody knew how to react. Every single social media blew up. Reddit, Twitter, your mum on Facebook was probably talking about this. But the worst was yet to come, because at the time when this hack happened, it could be brushed off just by saying, well, Jeb Burton's computer was probably individually hacked. And it seems at the time, this is the conclusion the event organizers went with, because soon after this hack happened, they started another game. In retrospect, they probably shouldn't have started a new game because clearly the competitive integrity of the game was interfered with by the original hack that went on. But granted, they started a new game and therefore Destroyer decided to find a new target. The new target was Imperial Hal, who was also another pro player playing in the ALGS, streaming individually to his fans. At the time, 40,000 of them, mind you. So it was a golden opportunity for Destroyer to strike. And he definitely struck, as quite early into the game, Hal and his team were going down to the mill on storm point to get into a fight. And Hal saw an enemy on a bridge, so of course he took some shots at the enemy. 
The weird thing is, those shots were shooting a bit too hard. Yeah, if you see that bullet in the bottom right, you know something's not right with Hal's computer, and he immediately caught on that he was being hacked as well, with the prior knowledge that Jen Burton was hacked only a game before this. When hacked though, unlike Jen Burton who immediately left the game because he knew he had hacks on his system, Hal didn't immediately leave and kind of tried to bend himself around the rules, which was uh, definitely a funny moment. Although by this point, pretty much everyone, it was clear there was some sort of issue with Apex that was allowing hackers to take control of your computer. Because of these two situations, the ALGS was paused and the stream was put onto this screen while everyone figured out what was going on. And trust me, the theories were going absolutely rampant. Luckily, after around 20 minutes of this stream, we did get some information that the ALGS was now basically being cancelled until further notice because of issues with the competitive integrity. And yeah, those were definitely competitive integrity issues. And that was it. That was the only official word we heard from EA or Respawn for several days. So, as you can imagine, speculation went absolutely absolutely rampant. To start the speculation off, first of all Hal was banned and then his teammate who didn't have any hacks on his system was banned as well and currently on the day of recording and editing they are still banned. Throughout the night and next day, there were many theories that Apex had a remote code execution exploit which would allow hackers to basically do anything on anybody's computers who had Apex, which led to a lot of people saying do not launch Apex. And there were also theories that Destroyer 2009 was a rogue ex respawn employee who wanted to sabotage the game. But truly, nobody knew what the issue was and even the makers of the Apex anti-cheat were denying it was anything to do with them. So all of the pressure was on respawn to make some sort of response. And well, they definitely took their time. Also, while we were waiting for a respawn response, Destroyer actually made a comment about Pirate Software's analysis of Imperial House Computer after the hacks were put onto it, basically poking fun at the analysis. But then eventually, finally, on March the 20th, two days later, we got respawn's response to the hack, and they said on Sunday, a few professional Apex Legends players had their accounts hacked during an ALGS event. Game and player security are our highest priorities, which is why we paused the competition to address the issue immediately. Quick side that respawn, I don't think we're remembering the same game. And they also said, our teams have deployed the first of a layered series of updates to protect the Apex Legends player community and create a secure experience for everybody. And when this was posted, a lot of the devs were like, yeah, this was hard work and stuff. So I would imagine there was a real horrible issue that they had to patch. But they never truly told us what the issue was. I mean, they never were going to tell us because it could have affected their stock prices or something. But it's kind of sad that we never got an official word. Although we kind of do get an official word later is confusing. After this was posted, a lot of people decided to come back to the game because they had been holding off, but not everybody did. You can see right here, this is when the hack took place and you can see there is immediately a drop off and it never truly recovered. Apex's player numbers for the rest of season 20 have pretty much been ruined by this hack, which is such a shame because it's no coincidence that a load of people just decided to stop playing a day after the hack and a day after everybody was saying don't launch the game. Even though we'll probably never get official information from Respawn about this ALGS hack, we did get some that may be true. TechCrunch actually claims they interviewed Destroyer 2009, which allowed us to get a bit of extra insight, but do take this article with a pinch of salt because they've never truly verified how they managed to interview Destroyer. I mean, it's pretty odd. Although in this TechCrunch interview, it is claimed that Destroyer took the credit for the hacks, saying that he did it, just for fun and with the goal of forcing Apex devs to fix the vulnerability he exploited. When asked, Destroyer apparently refused to say how he did the hacks because he didn't want to talk about them until he knew Respawn had patched them and apparently the hacks had nothing to do with the server and he never touched anything outside of the Apex process. All of the hacks were taking place inside of the game. And to me personally, this quote does make it seem like it was Destroyer 2009 actually doing this interview because it's almost like this quote is specifically made to disagree with the theories Pirate Software made about the hack at the time, which we knew Destroyer had already disagreed with prior to this interview. Destroyer also tried to defend the accusation that he had malicious actions in mind when doing this hack because he said, just imagine if it wasn't a joke and we didn't put any memes in chat. I'm pretty sure we could have ruined someone's career if that cheat popped up in the tournament. Which is very true because this could have easily ruined Jen Burton's career if it wasn't clear on the left of the screen that he was being hacked. Honestly, I'm so glad these chat messages existed because the accusations would have been insane. 
insane. He also said he targeted Jen Burton and Hal because they're just nice guys. The consensus right now is that this interview is legit and it probably is because it's from TechCrunch, so honestly, I'm really thankful this one exists. With the interview and the hacks and the patches said and done, the conversation around Destroyer 2009 would slowly subside. Also, Respawn would publicly release another patch where they attempted to fix a few more vulnerabilities with Apex, and it seemed all was well. But everyone was left with a question. Is Destroyer ever going to be brought to justice because at the end of the day, he cost Respawn a lot of money, undeniably, and he could have cost these guys their careers. As we've seen with Rockstar, these companies don't forgive or forget. If you hack them and make a fool of them, they will come after you and you will go to prison. Well, it's kind of a weird case with Destroyer because believe it or not, Respawn do currently have his address and name and pretty much every personal detail about him. Thank you to the work of a few investigators in the community who were able to track down some of Destroyer's old accounts and therefore his personal details and also John Hammond who made this information known to Respawn. In fact, John Hammond and these investigators are the only reason we know Destroyer's history of rust hacks and also his unknown cheats handle of Tomoxa. But the thing is, Respawn probably can't do anything with this information they've got, and they'll probably never be able to bring Destroyer to justice. Because all of the information surrounding him leads us to believe that he lives in Russia. The rest of the world has no jurisdiction over Russia. While he's there, nobody can do anything, so Destroyer is truly never going to see punishment for this. And that's probably how it's going to be forever. I waited a while after the incident to see how it would all pan out, and honestly, it seems like Destroyer has calmed down. He's not actively hacking in Apex anymore. I mean, at least while this video has been made, and he's not done anything major. I think he definitely had good intentions when he did the big hack, and probably won't do anything too public anymore, honestly. Even though Respawn can't do anything about him, his information is out there now. The right people know it, and it's kind of freaky that people will just know your address, so it's probably a good idea to either hack under another alias, or just stop. But hopefully it's clear, I'm not trying to glamorize Destroyer 2009 or hacking, it's bad, and at the end of the day, you will get doxxed, and you will get in trouble. I just hope this serves as a nice timeline, and hopefully the final chapter of the Destroyer story.